Always great catching up with my next guest, a fellow Pacific Northwester, Michael Chiesa, back here on the program. He's got a big fight coming up here against Vicente Luque, UFC 265, August 7th. Mike, what's up, man? How's it going? James, it's good to hear from you. I don't hear from you enough. You talk to Colby all the time. I don't ever get enough. I don't get enough FaceTime with you. <laughs> that, that, that's why you're here. I'm saving the best for last, right? I, I talked to him before well, and now I get you after. So it's all good. That's right. Yeah. It's good. That's good. Um, I, I did uh, catch your interview with my buddy Mike Heck um, and, and, you know, took some pointers from that. One of the things I wanted to ask you about that whole situation that you guys discussed about, you know, you being discussed for the title and all that. Does that bother you at all that, you know, you can tell that the UFC is kind of using this as sort of a negotiation in terms of uh, the title fight? Like, does that stuff bother you or are you just kind of cool with or, uh, you know, understanding how the negotiations work? No, it doesn't bother me at all, because if it didn't work out, I would have been the guy. So there's nothing... There's nothing to be upset about. And it's not like it's like a it's not a play. It's just a real thing. It's like, hey, you know, the Us- Usman's in the driver's seat for, for the choices that get made for some of these title fights as well. So if something on the B side doesn't work out, you know, I was the guy. So it's not like they just like I don't think it was some type of play, but it was definitely like, you know, it does, it, it's it's I don't it, it, there's no foul play. I don't think it's a bad tactic or anything like that. I just think, hey, you know, if you're not going to take the deal, we know this guy will. And it, it, and I would have taken the deal. I don't care. You know, I, um, I want to fight for the belt. So it's uh, yeah, I don't think it was anything bad at all. I think I think maybe a little bit of what I say said got kind of maybe misconstrued just a little bit. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, no, it, it wasn't. I think that if, if uh, whoever wouldn't have taken that fight, you know, it would have been me. So. It would have worked out if somebody said no. Was there any talk of pulling you from this fight and giving you Usman right after like this? Because I know obviously you had this fight booked before and then there was talk, you know, because Usman still doesn't have an opponent. Was there ever talk of pulling you out of this fight? Nothing against Vicente, but I know, you know, you were sort of the name they were talking about. Um, no. So this fight, I mean, we kind of we've known about this fight for a long time. And to be completely honest with you, James, like once Vicente beat Tyron Woodley, like I called Danny, we knew like, Hey, that's going to be the guy, you know, it's just like looking at the way the rankings were and seeing who was matched up and, and who was just coming off of fights and stuff. We kind of saw this one coming for, for a long time. Uh, but it wasn't signed until about eight weeks out, but no, there was never any talks at any point about pulling me from the Vicente fight once we had signed the contract. But, you know, there was definitely like, there was a serious possibility that I could have been the guy in a couple in a time. So, you know, it would have been great if that was the case, um, you know, but it doesn't hurt to go out there and, and go fight another high level guy in Vicente Luque and gain some more experience. Um, you know, coming off that Neil Magni fight, I think the five round experience was huge for me to know what it's like to go five hard rounds, push a pace against a guy that's known for being a cardio machine. I think I gained a lot from that fight, but I think one more, you know, and it's easy to say just one more. But not, you know, when you got a guy like Vicente Luque uh, across the octagon from you, it, <laughs> that ain't no walk in the park, you know. But I know that if I can, if I can beat Vicente Luque, um, I'm ready for the title. I think that that will cement the fact that, that I'm the guy, you know. And I think that um, I, I know my skills have always been there, but a little more octagon time um, doesn't hurt anybody. So um, I've just been, you know, once once the contract was signed, it's laser focus on Vicente. I'm tuning out all the stuff from Ali and all the other stuff going on about me potentially being the guy, because at that point, once I signed the contract, I knew that that was going to be the guy. And, and if you take your focus away from a guy like Vicente Luque, you can find yourself in a lot of trouble. So, um, yeah. I know you're in Vegas right now. I've been following along on social media. How long have you been down there doing your camp? Man, I feel like an eternity. (laughs) I've been down here. uh, I think I've, not my last death show, but the one before that was, was my first, was my first week. So I think altogether I've been down here for about, uh, about six weeks, seven weeks, something like that. So I'm going to go home this weekend, recharge the batteries a little bit. I'm a little bit homesick. Uh, so I'm going to go home for the weekend, uh, train with my jujitsu coach back home. Uh, you know, Rick's been down in Chicago training with Julie. Um, you know, so we're all kind of spread out right now, but this is the right place for me to be, man. I got so many good training partners down here, you know, and I've, I've worked with John Wood, you know, him and I've had such a good, great relationship since 2013. And, you know, I got, uh, Aaron Jeffrey down here, fellow Canadian who's been, he's going to bring him up, know, uh, the man of the mullets, you know, there you go. Yeah, man. He makes me jealous. Every time he walks in the gym, just swinging that thing. I'm just like, God, man, you remind me of a young 29 year old me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. But, yeah, but I mean, tons of great partners, you know, and then you got guys like Johnny Parsons and, uh, you know, Aaron Jeffrey and, and um, 
you know, the list goes on and on. There's just so many good guys. Uh, but Aaron's been huge. Aaron's been a great, great asset in this camp. He's a middleweight, so I like being able to get in there and mix up with some bigger guys and challenge myself. But this has been great for me to be down here, especially when you got the blessing from your head coach, and he's been came, coming down here a few times, checking on me and stuff. So camp's been good, man. Firing on all cylinders. Uh, August 7th can't come soon enough. Sean Strickland in your camp at all? I know he's got his main event coming up. I know he does spend some time at Syndicate as well. <laughs> oh, Sean. Yeah, Sean's been down here. and I, I give him crap. Look, the guy's a freaking animal, dude. I don't know. I like. I have actually have sparring videos because we all share the octagon when we spar. The guy's a fucking monster. Pardon my language. Like, mm-hmm. I know you can swear away. I'm Canadian, but you can swear away. It's all good. Dude, Sean's a beast, man. And I, he's always like, come on, Kies, when are we going to spar? And I'm always like, yeah, yeah, maybe tomorrow, you know. But, uh, dude, he's an animal. So we just got, like, a good stable of guys. We're really pushing each other. It's good to have big bodies. You know, I have great training partners in Spokane. I got Brady Houston, who's on Ultimate Fighter. Ashton Charlton, who's a young kid coming up. The list goes on and on. But a lot of these guys are a lot smaller than me. So while I can get good work from them, when it comes when it comes down um, to training camp, I need to be with some big bodies. And um, at this point in time, it's just best for me to come down here. And on top of the fact that, I've been working extensively with Bo Sandoval with the PI, you know, since 2007, 2018. So it's good for me to be down. And this is the first full camp I've done back down here since Pettis. And and it's been great because last time I did a full camp down here, I was cutting to 55. So I really wasn't at my best. And so now they're able to actually push me the way an athlete should be able to be pushed. So things are going good down here. Weight cut's going good too. You got access to the PI. Everything's really close by. Yeah, yeah. I actually, my weight was so low today. My waist has been coming down so fast that they're like, "Yeah, we need to get your cake cows up, buddy. Take a, take an extra cheeseburger home with you." So I had a I had my regular meal, which is really healthy, and I got a, I got a little cheat a little cheat cheeseburger today, which is nice. But man, that's been huge for me, man. I think um, I think I've always had the skills, but it's um, the weight cut was just always such a battle for me, and it was the fight before the fight. And I look back on it and I'm like, how the, what the hell was I doing? What was I thinking? You know, so this is how an athlete should train. And um, it's been great, man, especially being down here and not having to kill myself with that weight cut and really just take advantage of training and, you know, and just push myself to my limits. It's been awesome. Corner, how will that look? Is it going to be Rick in there or how, how are you sort of figuring that out? You know, I'm keeping my corner the same, man. Um, look, John Wood's my boy. John Wood's my dog. And, and he'll actually be down there with Vince Morales. So, you know, I'll get to work with John and kind of maintain the stuff that we've been doing. But, you know, as of right now, it's still, you know, I, I, I've been doing great with Rick as my chief corner. That would never change. You know, he I've never gone into a fight in my 13 years without Rick, you know, being the first guy in the cage, in the octagon, giving me, you know, instructions. Um, and then Sam Cecilia as well. So those are like my two guys that like no matter what, though, I, I can't go into battle without those guys. It just wouldn't feel right. And it's like, you know, going back to that Pettis fight, I didn't have Sam there. He was giving birth to his daughter. And, you know, I can't hold that against him because um, I don't. But uh, and then Austin Arnett, you know, so it's like uh, those are my band of brothers. I, I I do. You know, it's tough. If I wish I could have four because it would be John. You know what I mean? So but I'll have him down there. We'll all be in the same locker room and stuff. But as of right now, it's it's the three. It's my three amigos. It's Rick, Sam, Austin, my my good old Northwest boys. Was it by design that you were on this card with Juliana fighting Amanda Nunes as well, or was it just a coincidence? Um, I think it was just a coincidence. I mean, I don't know if that's something the UFC had had planned. I mean, it, it, to be quite frank, it's not – I mean, I'm undefeated when I fought on the same card as Julie. I'm undefeated when I fought on the same card as Sam. We've always all performed very well when we fought together. But this one's a little trickier. You know, it's like Rick's been down in, in Chicago a lot with Julie – that's where she needs to be. That's where she lives. And, you know, and I understand what, what he's doing. Um, but this is, this is a, this is a, one of those situations where it would have been better if we could have been spread apart. But with that being said, it's great that I have a guy in John Wood who like, you know, he t- welcomes me into his gym with open arms. He's always taken such good care of me. Um, you know, John's been like, uh, you know, ever since him and I hit it off, he's been, a great coach and a great friend, a great mentor, somebody I can, somebody that I actually look up to tremendously. So it kind of works out that it's not like I'm down here in no man's land by myself, kind of running my camp. I still got John taking care of me and he understands the situation. 
Um, you know, but there's so much credit that goes to him headed into this fight. Um, you know, but I'm glad that I'm going to have him down there. If I could sneak four corners, he'd be the guy. But you never know, dude, with COVID and stuff, who knows what can freaking happen, man. Like we've seen, I mean, Jeff Neal lost all his corner, man, the night before he fought. Fought Wonder uh, Boys, yeah. Yeah, you know, so you never know what's going to happen. So it's like, it's almost good to have, like, it's almost a blessing to have John there as well because you just don't know what's going to happen. But, you know, the, the one cool thing, as hard as it is to have me and Julie on the same card for Rick, at the end of the day, it's hard right now. But once we get down there and just to be, like, strength in numbers, you know what I mean? Like, we're going to be rolling deep as a team. You know what I mean? It's going to be me and Julie, and she's going to have Rick and all her coaches. I'm going to have Sam and Austin. And I'm going to be with John Wood and, like, all of Spokane's rolling down there. Like, it's really, like – Julie and I will have a presence on this card with how many people we have in our corner on our team and out in the crowd supporting us. So I think that's really important. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. They say everything's bigger in Texas. So we'll find out. Did you bring the super Nintendo with you this time? Always. Oh God, James, if you could have been on fight Island, man. Oh my God. I know gosh. we'll do it. We'll do it. One of these days. We'll oh. do it. One of these days. Yeah. Dude, fight Island. So this is a funny story. So fight Island, I brought the switch. I brought the, the, the super Nintendo and the switch. So we get Mario Kart going. And so our rooms are right next to each other. My room and then um, – so all our rooms are right next to each other. But there's like this little space in the balcony where you can like shimmy through the rail and sneak to room to room. So we would all just sneak into my room and hang out and like, dude, we're playing Mario Kart like 24-7. And like Austin Arnett is such a freaking loud – like whether he's winning or he's losing, it's like this huge screaming yell with like a bunch of F-bombs and stuff and like – when we got let out of quarantine, Matt Brown and Mickey Gall were across the hall. And so like right when we come out of quarantine, they're like, oh, what's up, guys? We're talking. We're like, hey, has that been you guys like yelling at the wee hours of the night in the morning? And we're like, no, nope, no, nope, definitely not us. <laughs> but if you're in Houston, man, come stop by. the video I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Off, the, the, the latest I've heard is we're, we're Canadians. So you guys can come into Canada apparently soon. We can't go across the border until August. Like well, do August twenty second. Switch. Of course, yeah, I have a Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Well, then maybe, maybe since you're in Canada, maybe we'll have to get online. Maybe there we'll you have go. To bring you that's the solution. Bring you into the party remotely, and then we can all play together. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk after. I like that idea. That sounds. Uh, that sounds good. Um, I was going to ask you about Vicente. In that, do you feel like there's any opponent you fought that reminds you of him in terms of his style? You know, even just preparing for this fight, because you fought a lot of guys. Is there anyone that kind of reminds you of Vicente a lot at all? Um. Yeah. There, I mean, there's a few guys. Um. You know, Trinaldo and RDA are the first to come to mind. The difference is those guys are lefties um, and Vicente's – Vicente, sorry, not Vicente. Vicente is, uh, you know, he's, he's orthodox. Uh, but there's always, like, you, having so many fights in the UFC, you can always go back to so many fights and, like, pull away a certain attribute that an opponent you've had has had. Uh, but I feel like um, Trinaldo and, and RDA have a lot, a lot of similarities. It's just the stance is a lot different. Um you know, but it's uh, it's crazy, man. It's like it's just kind of like it's hit me this year that it's like, dude, you've been in the UFC for nine years. Like you're becoming the vet now, you know. And it's yeah. just so much. It just it just really doesn't feel like that because I'm not, you know, I'm not settling. You know what I mean? After nine years, some sometimes guys just kind of settle into a groove and kind of stick with it with the way they train and stuff. And I'm still finding ways to evolve and finding ways to push myself without straying away from my identity as a fighter. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, those are the two guys that come to my mind first. Um, and then there's other guys I've fought that I can pull things away from as well. But I will say this, man, like this guy is 110%. Nobody is more dangerous. No, there's no guy I've fought that's more dangerous than Vicente Luque. I mean, you just look at his his strength and schedule and and how he's how he's gone out and just finished guys time and time again. I mean, he's he's, he's racking up bonuses left and right. Um, he's very dangerous, you know, and I'm very aware of the threats that he possesses. And I, in, in any guy, this is, this is like the last, this is the one guy at welterweight. I feel like you, you want to respect all your opponents, but like, if you, if you take him even this much lightly, like it, it, he will, he will capitalize. Like he's, he's a killer, man. So I got to be on my toes on fight night. I feel like that that's where you start you start getting lacks of days go around around Vicente Luque. He's going to slip something through the cracks and knock you out or choke you out. So I got to be on my toes on fight night. Um, I respect him as an opponent. I feel like this is the most dangerous guy I've ever fought, and that's why I feel like if I can come away with a win, um, I got a strong. I got a very very strong claim to be the next guy. 
How's this fight playing out? How's it unfolding on August 7th? I mean, I can't say too much. I'm working on a lot of good stuff. Okay. Um, every, everybody knows what I bring to the table. Um, but, um, you know, just a high paced fight, you know, I, I'm ready to push for 15 hard, hard minutes, you know, and, and I, I, I want to take him to places he's never been. And I'm sure he wants to do the same thing, vice versa. Um, whether it's a finish or a decision, man, I'm just going to go put the pace on the guy. Um, I do believe that I'm I'm one of the strongest, most athletic guys in the division. And, and after having, after going into the trenches with a guy like Neil Magny and having to gut out 25 minutes of fighting, um, I feel like I, I've there's a certain type of base you can gain from fights that you, that you'll never lose. And I feel like I gained so much from that fight that I can carry on into this one. And I'm you know if I can get a finish, great. If I got to go in the trenches and walk through the fire to beat this guy, I'm ready to do that as well. So may the best man win. You know. Uh, hats off to the guy. He's an awesome guy, fierce competitor, and I'm looking forward to fighting him. We talked about the implications of this fight. It's huge. With the fact that Usman doesn't have his next fight book, do you think there's a possibility of you sliding in there ahead of Colby? Dana saying Colby, but we haven't seen a date or anything booked yet. 100%. Why not me? I, I don't care what anybody says. I know that this is going to get a ton of flack from people on the internet when I have to talk about wanting to be the next guy. If I beat Vicente Luque, I don't really care. I mean, I... I Look, James, I, I said it yesterday in an Instagram post. I'm not here to prove anybody wrong. I could give two shits about the naysayers. It makes no difference to me. I'm not out to prove people wrong. I'm out to prove people right. The people that believe in me, that have been by my side, my friends, my family, my teammates, the fans that, the, the, the fans that believe in me, I'm out to prove them right. And, and if I can go out there and be Vicente Luque, there's no reason why it can't be me. Yeah, if, if you look, if I, if I can go out there and get my hand raised and look at the guys I'd be, especially the last three, I mean, how many other guys have put put to, it could have put together three straight wins against three ranked opponents? RDA was five, Magny was nine, uh, Vicente will be number six if I beat him. Like that's a good strength of schedule. That's enough to stake my claim. Um, I'm already bugging Hunter Campbell about it, so I'm like, dude, I, if when I if if I win this fight, you better be calling me, you know. And I just think that I'm the guy, um, especially with just the landscape of the division. You know, I, I personally for me. As uh, taking myself out of the equation, I think Leon should be next just because of the win streak. But I understand that, uh, that Nate Diaz might have robbed him of that opportunity within the last minute of their fight. I think if Leon could have pitched a shutout, he'd be the next guy. But I think Nate Diaz doing what he does in that last minute of that fight really kind of threw a wrench in the gear. So um, uh, why not me, dude? I've been here for nine years. I'm, uh, I'm a diehard loyal to this company, uh, you know. And I, I'm not saying I'm Michael Bisping because Michael Bisping is on another level of toughness. He's a totally different fighter than I am. But I'm just when I when I relate myself to him, it's like, look how long it took him to get a title fight. He had his ups, he had his downs, and, and he finally got his. So and that's if I if I got to be the next Michael Bisping, if I got to be the guy that's got to get in the trenches and fight for over a decade to get a title fight, so be it. Screw it. That, then I'll do it. I'll do whatever I got to do to get to a title. I believe, I believe it's my destiny. And I believe that if I can get my hand raised on August 7th, I'm the guy. How do you feel like stylistically you match up against Usman? I think that I, I, I posed a problem for him that he hasn't faced. You know what I mean? Um, there's a lot of wrinkles to my game. I haven't shown. Um, if I, if plan a works, I'm sticking to plan a, um, and everybody knows what that is. I don't got to say it. And it might not be the most fan appealing style, but I don't care. The fans don't write my second paycheck. Um, the, the wins do. So, um, but I, I just think he hasn't fought anybody like me. I think I bring a different style that he's never faced. I'm a hard guy to train for. You can't, it's hard to find a guy with my frame, my build, my strength, my skills. It's hard to find one guy that can emulate all of, all of the things that I do. And, and it's the same thing for Usman. It's a tough fight. Um, but I want to fight the best. Even if I come up short and I lose, I don't care. I just want to say I fought the best guy in the world. But I believe if I, if I can get myself to that moment that I can shine. So, um, you know, but I, I'm not, I, like I said, I'm not looking too far ahead. And once I signed a contract, uh, you know, the last nine weeks, it's been all Vicente Luque. And we'll figure out the rest from there once, once I get through with this fight. Nate Diaz, you mentioned him. There's been some talk of him fighting Usman. Um, where would that rank in terms of bad title shots? Because I don't, I mean, we've had fighters off losses get title shots, but to lose decisively twice, I know he had the nice fifth round against Leon. Where would that rank in your opinion? Because I think that's kind of disrespectful to the division. I love Nate. Nate's my boy. Um, if, if he gets a title fight, you know, I, I'd be happy for him. But on the other side of things, it's like for us guys out here grinding and out, it's like, what's the point? You know what I mean? Like, there's 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 plenty of other things I could do in the world than fight to make a living. Um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm really, I just want to, I just want to fight for the title. That's like my, that's my main goal. I want to fight for the championship. And, and at least if, if I, if I don't get there, you know, I'll go down trying, but it's like, if, if you can't reward people for losing, especially when guys are out here trying to grind it out and get wins um, and stay competing and trying to do what they, trying to do what we feel is the right thing to do to get to those moments. And that's to compete and to win. And uh, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of that idea. I, I hope that doesn't happen. I don't think, I, at the end of the day, I don't think it will, but I, the, the idea of it kind of scares me. Have you seen Usman's manager at the PI at all? Because I know he seems very, he seems to be a fan of yours if he's mentioning your name and Usman's talk and all that. I love Ali. Oh, Ali. Yeah, we get along great. I, you know, I think Ali's a great guy. Uh, you know, we've always spoke well. He knows, he knows I'm a diehard uh, Ruby sports and entertainment guy. So it's not, it's not like it's like he's nice to me because he's trying to like swindle me over to, to dominance MMA. We just have a good relationship. We always have. Um, I try to be in good relationships with everybody, man. Whoever the, your manager is, whatever gym you train at, whoever your coach is, I just I want to be a guy that's like respected in the sport amongst my peers. You know, the fans are a different story. You can never, the fans are just like you can can't never win. Get them all I learned that side. a long time ago. You can't win no matter what. It doesn't matter. So <laughs> no, but when it comes to managers, coaches, and stuff like that, I'd like to think that I'm good in all hoods. You know, and Ollie and I have always just had a good relationship and. And, uh, you know, I know he's trying to throw me a bone and I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think that when the time comes, if I can get past Vicente Luque, I think that he's going to make the push as well as my manager. They're going to make the push to, to, to put me into that fight. I mean, Usman's got to fight new blood at some point, you know, and, um, and I know that Usman wants to fight new blood. I know that he wants to be one of the most dominant champions of all time. And there's only so many guys within the top 10 that he hasn't fought and I'm on that short list. So, you know, can't look too far ahead, you know, can't, can't think, like I said, I take my focus away from Vicente Luque. I might wake up counting ceiling lights and I don't want that to happen. So I'm very focused on him and we'll see what happens thereafter. The title's the focus, but a name that sounds like he's going to stay in your division is Kevin Lee. And I know that's a fight, uh, you know, I'm sure you'd like back. Is that, is that a fight that would ever interest you down the line to avenge that loss? You know, what's funny is, uh, I don't really dwell too much on my losses, man. I, I'm I, if it if it, if it happens, you know, if it's like he gets on a win streak and I, you know, if if, if it lines up to make sense, like yeah, you know, we can fight again. But it's not one of those things like uh, it, it doesn't keep me up at night. I actually see Kevin around the PI, and we actually kind of flip each other grief, and uh, it's like a good, healthy, competitive rivalry. But you know, we'll see what he's got. He's got a tough fight ahead of him. He's got Sean Brady, who's another guy that's like. You want to talk about somebody to be on the watch for, dude, like Sean Brady. And I told Kevin, it's funny. So before Kevin committed to go back, going back up to 170, I don't think he'll, he won't give me credit for this. But if he does, because he told me to my face, to my eyeballs, and I'm not a liar, James Lynch. You know this about me. Um, I had a conversation with him before he got cleared to come back. And I was like, I was like, you know, what's, what's your next move, dude? Like, are you going 55? you going 70? What are you going to do? He's like, oh, I don't know, man. I just really want to get to 55, this and that. And I was like, dude. Quit killing yourself. I mean, give yourself a break. Go up to 170 and, and just quit fighting your body. You know what I mean? Go up to, and I'm not saying this like, so I'm like, get, get to 170 so I can fight you. It's nothing like that. No, no, at all. no. It's, it's, like, it's healthier. You're speaking from experience. Yeah. See, he's, he's one of those guys, man. Like, I know what it's like to push yourself through that kind of weight cut. And, and he, he's, you know, he's one of the biggest 55ers we've seen. And um, when he did go up to 170, he actually told me, he's like, hey, our little talk we had, man. You kind of pushed me over the edge. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's, I like that. But I, the one thing he did do is I told him, I go, hey, go up to 170, dude. G give yourself a gimme fight. Like, try to get yourself a fight that's a little more favorable. You know what I mean? Like, get, get something to get your feet wet. But that that old boy's stubborn. And he's like, screw it. Give me Sean Brady. I'm like, God dang. He's a tough man. You want to talk about mentally tough guys. I mean, people can flip Kevin all the shit they want. But, I mean – to go up to 170 pounds, coming off double ACL surgery, and say, hey, I want to fight that guy, that just shows he's tough. He's a fierce competitor. Talked about tough earlier. Um, one of the things I got to give you credit for, and I like this clip where, you know, Ortega's team was kind of going after Team Volkanovski and kind of making fun of them and stuff. Were you surprised by that, that there was a lot of disrespect there just towards some of the competitors? Uh, yeah, I was a little blown back by that. You know, it's being on the ultimate fighter. I know that like the coaches are going to go back and forth with each other and that's, that's fine. You know what I mean? And even if, even if Ortega was saying the things that coach Herrera was saying, like that's amongst the, the head coaches, they're there to like make TV. This is their show. 
But when that freaking guy starts saying stuff, I'm like, shut your mouth, dude. Like, who the hell are you? These guys are trying their best. And you're like, oh, you, you know, just, just the things he said. I just, I, I, it just left a bad taste in my mouth. Like, I'm like, if it, this is Volkanovsky and Ortega's show. If they want to say these things to each other, that's fine. But like, who the fuck are you? You know what I mean? And, and there's one little clip on there that didn't, that didn't make it on there. And I wish it would have, but I don't remember exactly how I said it, but he was standing there with like a clipboard and these knee sleeves on like double knee sleeves. And, uh, I made some freaking joke about his dorky ass knee sleeves. And I guess it kind of rode out through, through like the rest of the show. I guess it was like this ongoing joke, but I was legitimately pissed off. Cause it's like, I'm, you know, he, he's talking about Volkanovsky's team and I've always been boys with the, with the boys from down under. I've always gone along with Volkanovsky and, um, but my guy Brady's on that team. You know what I mean? So to me, it's like, you're talking shit to one of my teammates and that wouldn't, that wouldn't fly. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm always going to ride with my boys. And if you're going to talk shit to one of my teammates, someone that that's like, un, you know, Brady's like underneath me, he's like a guy that I'm bringing up, you know, I'm kind of like the big brother in this situation. It's like, shut your mouth. You're not going to talk to my guy like that. I just think it was out of line for him. Let, let Ortega and Volk, you didn't, you didn't hear any of Volkanovsky's coaches saying anything. But it's like these guys wanted – this little guy wants to chip in and, like, get his camera time. It's like, shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? These guys are trying their ass off. And guess what? It's tied 4-4. Eat your fucking words, Herrera. Why don't you try winning a fight, motherfucker? <laughs> and I didn't know – and I didn't – sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But if I had known that he would – if I would have known who he was, I would have rubbed that in his face. Like, yo, you, you want to talk about winning fights in the UFC? You got fucking elbowed to death. You know who that is? That was the guy that got elbowed to death by Gary Goodrich. The guy that was talking, yeah, so it's like, why don't you try winning a fucking fight in the octagon? Because I'm pretty sure you got your ass beat. So zip it, buddy. Zip it, lock it, put it in your pocket. Get out of here. Um, no, I was just going to say quickly, um, I don't know if you know, I called Brady's fight when he fought up here in Canada against Chad and Helliger. Did you know I did commentary for that fight? Yeah, for Rise FC. Rise FC, that's right. Yeah, there you go. Because Juliana yeah, yeah, was there, yeah. um, but I, I, I don't. I guess you must have been in Vegas or something training. I can't remember. So, he's I think a good kid. I was in. Tra- I was in training. Yeah, great kid, man. Super coachable, and his, you know, that fight against Josh Reddinghouse. What a performance, man! I, um, the ceiling's really high for me. He's got a tough fight in the semis, um, but man, he's just he's very coachable. Just a great acquisition to our team, and and. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you called his fight. I mean, you can tell it's night day difference from the guy that you saw. And he did well in that fight. It's just second round. Chad was able to adjust, and he was able to you know do some stuff. But I thought he looked good early on. So, you know, to Chad's credit, when I was talking to Sean Shelby on Fight Island the first time I went there um, last October, I'm like, you know, of course Sean's like, hey, who do you got in your gym? Let's talk business. And I'm like, oh, I got Brady Houston. He's like, who the hell is that? And I'm like, how do you say Chad's last name? And, and, and Helliger. And yeah, I go. He he go. I go. Brad, ah, he's good. Uh, his last fight, yeah, he kind of came up straight. He fought the, this Chad Allinger guy, and he goes Chad and Elger. I go, yeah. He goes, oh my god, that guy's so good. Are you serious? Your guy fought him. I go, yeah. They had a good competitive fight, and he ended up getting caught in the second. And I feel like that that fight, just because he fought him, is kind of what got him into the Ultimate Fighter, just because Sean thinks so highly uh, of Chad. So uh, you know, good on both guys. And he and he got signed to uh, Contender, Contender Series. Right? He's fighting. Yeah. Yeah, uh, coming up in September, I think. So that'll that'll be good. Okay, I know I know we're way yeah, over time. I got I got two more quick questions. First one: How was golfing? I saw the tweet the other day. Did you have fun going golfing? I hit a I hit I, my third hole of the day was a par four, and I hit par. So I you know I played hockey. I played hockey growing up. I do all right at Top Golf. I definitely had a bunch of shitty shots that day, but uh, definitely a new hobby of mine. I'm looking forward to. I, I call my fiance when I go. Hey, when the, when this fight gets over. We're getting a membership to the country club. There's one like a mile from my house. We're getting clubs. We're golfing. Um, so one of these days, maybe we'll hit the links. We got to hit the links. I just got back into golfing this year. And I'll tell you something. I'm a hockey player as well. It's actually bad for golf because you have that mentality of hitting it as hard as you can. That's not the way you do it. You got to get the technique down. Then you can work on the power, right? So that's oh, actually dude, it's been an so adjustment true. for me. That's so true. I like every time I drive, I just want to slam the thing. And they're like, yo, let the club, you, like my rental clubs are like some, Three thousand dollar tailor made clubs. Like, let the club do the work. I'm like, I want to freaking slap shot this thing, <laughs> three hundred yards. It just doesn't work out like that. No, no, you got to be patient with it. I just played yesterday. It's uh, we're getting good weather up here in the Pacific Northwest, so it's been uh, it's been nice. Uh, my last and most important question: Seattle Kraken. Did you see they announced the team Woo! yesterday? Are you paying attention? I did. They announced the team. 
Yeah, they did. Yesterday they unveiled it. They did the draft and all that. So it's uh, it's interesting. It might not be the final roster because they might do some trades, but it's looking pretty good so far. Really a young team. I, I would have liked to see Tyler Johnson on that roster. I know that if Tyler would have been on the team, I would have heard about it, but it would have been cool because for me, it, it, until now, it, this was great for me, James, because this was my last year as a Tampa Bay Lightning fan. I know that they're in different divisions, but uh, I've been a Tampa Bay Lightning guy um, ever since Tyler signed to him you know, years ago. How do you know Tyler Johnson? So I just got my – he's a Spokane guy. He's a Spokane guy. So I, Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, watched, yeah, you never put two and two together. Okay. Yeah, I watched him play when he played for the Chiefs. So, um, you know, I got to watch him, you know, come along. And so I've been a Tampa Bay guy forever. I'm like, you know, I got to jump ship. You know what I mean? Uh, not completely. You know, they're, they're on opposite. Uh, they're in different divisions, correct? Yeah. So I, uh, I can still support both guys. But next year, you'll see me in my Seattle Kraken jersey. Love it. Mike, we went way over time. This is awesome. Really appreciate it. Anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors? Any social media? I'll give you the last word. Man, just... Just thanks to all my teammates. Thanks to my coaches. Just thanks to everybody that's uh, put their time into me this camp. Um, and it's all been my day ones, man. It's been my day one guys. And uh, it, I feel like if I start naming names, I'm just going to forget about some people. So if you're watching this interview, you know who you are. And I love you. And I thank you. And if uh, if you want to follow me on social media, at Mike, Mike Mav 22 for everything, tune in August 7th.